Howdy there once again YouTube. First off, if this intro or video is too long for you, please skip forward by using the parts section provided in the description box below. As many of you probably already know, my name is Ben Ferriolo and I'm an amateur seismologist who hopes to make a career out of monitoring volcanic and tectonic and hazard areas. And I'm a beginner amateur guys, I'm still learning a lot of stuff. Before we start, if you have not checked out my website yet, please do so now. There is a link to it in the description box below right under my email address. It teaches you how to find and analyze seismic data, what different types of seismic signatures look like, many seismic plots and images to many different events, and much more. I'm currently working on a new page about the rapid fire swarms that occur in and around West Thumb Lake and Yellowstone Lake within the infamous Yellowstone Supervolcano. It has taken much longer than I expected to put together, but I promise it will be out in the next seven days or so at the max. Also, Steamboat Geyser erupted for the third time of 2019, which is the 35th time since it reactivated in early 2018. If you wish to see the info and data pertaining to Steamboat Geyser's third eruption of 2019, please look at my most recent video or simply go to my website, go to the Seismic Events drop-down menu, and click Steamboat Geyser 2019. This recent eruption of Steamboat was the smallest ever recorded, well, at least the smallest ever recorded since it reactivated in early 2018. Now before I get into the recent seismic data for Yellowstone, there was a little bit of swarming near Madison River and Maple Creek, I would like to show the data for the recent day or so of activity at Kilauea and Mauna Loa volcanoes in Hawaii. Something just struck about an hour ago of me recording this, and right now it is 11.26 a.m. Pacific Time. January 27th, 2019. Here we are at uh, the past one day of activity, all magnitudes. Only six earthquakes. Doesn't seem major. It, was, it did uh, skyrocket. It didn't skyrocket too much, but it did skyrocket a few days ago. Went to about 20 to 25. That isn't super crazy. We were seeing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of earthquakes here during the mid-2018 eruptions. But all these are not too concerning, but look at what just happened. A magnitude 3.7. Look at this. Right on the flanks of Mauna Loa. Let's go down. Now, just for your information, here is Kilauea Caldera in Halimamau Crater, inside of Kilauea Caldera. Puo'o Crater is right about here. And the Lower East Rift Zone Fissures, and especially Fisher, what is it? Fisher 18, or no, Fisher 8 was the one that grew the largest, right? That's right in this area, right about here. Well, we do have some earthquakes occurring on Mauna Loa, which is the largest volcano. I think probably the largest shield volcano in the world. Please correct me if I'm wrong on that. Please correct me if I'm wrong. But I think it is the largest, definitely the largest in Hawaii, that's for sure. It's huge. But we did have a 3.7 right in this location here. It was supposedly at negative 1.6 kilometers in depth, so very shallow, guys, just right under the volcano, right under the surface, very shallow. And then we have a 2.0, just about 10 minutes later or so, and that's pretty much the only seismicity over the past few hours. But that's pretty good size, guys, and very shallow for that large of an earthquake. So I'm thinking something could be brewing down there. Now let's click on the event page for this magnitude 3.7. I don't think we have seen a magnitude 3.7 or an earthquake this large since the eruptive activity calmed in August. Please, again, correct me if I'm wrong on that. Here's the felt report right here. Did you feel it right here? The two people that felt it were right on the coast right there. So. Very interesting. Now, I would like to go to the program swarm. Let's back out. Go to file, open file. I downloaded the data for TRAD in the HV network. Open it up, go forward. There is the magnitude 3.7 right there. Had a strange, strange feature right in the middle. Get into that in just a second, but just for your information, since this earthquake occurred right on the flanks of Mauna Loa, I tried to find the closest station, and I decided to use this station right here. Notice there's Mauna Loa. The earthquake happened right about there. So a good station to use would be this one right here, TRAD, in the HV network. Let's go back to Swarm. All right, let's do Persistent Rescale Off. I do not need to add a filter right at this moment. Earlier in the day, this is the past day's worth of seismic activity. Some strange, strange low-frequency activity. But I'm not 
certain if that could definitely could be volcanic tremor or something like that but i am not certain i don't want to say if it is for sure just in case if i'm wrong because it doesn't look strange it does look very very strange if this is harmonic or volcanic tremor i've never seen anything like it i don't know but remember down below the five hertz line is where to look at Again, we are having these strange, but very weak, guys. That's only going to about 60 amplitude count. That's extremely weak. We had a few small, small earthquakes throughout the day. Very tiny. There's another earthquake right there. Let me pan this down real fast. Let's see. There's another earthquake right here. Normal high frequencies. Let's check the spectrogram just to make sure. Yeah, mid-range to high frequencies. Not a low frequency event. That's not a low-frequency event either. So we did have some small popping throughout the day, but just recently, let me scroll down, we had that 3.7 and 2.0, right? Here is the magnitude 3.7 that just struck Mauna Loa. Here it is right here. Not really a low-frequency earthquake, but it did have a very long coda. Remember, the coda is an end tail of an earthquake. Look at this, guys. Look at how long that tail is. Look at that. A perfect slope perfect extended coda that is very long very very long coda yeah i think the coda actually ends right about let's see i'm gonna say probably right about at this earthquake that's when the coda ends multiple minutes i'm gonna say four minutes probably that's very long this was an interesting earthquake though very very intriguing I don't know why we saw one this large on Mauna Loa at this shallow of a depth, but I don't know. And this is the extended coda that I am analyzing right here. Yes, it lasted a long, long time, guys. Very long time. Now let's zoom back out real quick. Here is the magnitude 2.0, I think they said, that just struck the most recent earthquake for Hawaii. And it's looking very strange. It almost, yeah, two earthquakes. Okay, so they're probably reporting this one right here. They're probably not reporting this one. This one was probably a magnitude 2.0, the one that they're talking about. Prior to the 3.7, we saw two other earthquakes right here, most likely occurring on Mauna Loa as well. It There does, again, seem to be some type of low-frequency background tremor, but again, I am uncomfortable with saying that for sure because it is very strange. Very strange. The dominant frequencies of this background tremor are, I screwed that up, are, okay, so I don't think it's harmonic or volcanic tremor. Frequencies are way too low. Frequencies are about 0 0.2 hertz. Yeah, that's way too low. So, guys, we did see a large earthquake in Hawaii, possibly the largest earthquake since the eruptive activity calmed at Kilauea, but this time... This earthquake occurred at Mauna Loa. So, is Mauna Loa's activity changing too? I don't know, but I will keep a very close eye on it. Now, in the past day or two, there has been an increase in seismicity near the Madison River area in northwest Yellowstone National Park. Most of the seismicity the past few months has occurred down near Shoshone Lake which is south of Old Faithful and southwest of West Thumb Lake, another location that has been seeing some seismicity, especially of the rapid-fire variety, is the location just west of the northern tip of Yellowstone Lake, directly in between Seismic Station Borehole 208 and Station YML, right in this area here. Also, there was a swarm on January 6th, just about 21 days ago or so, that struck just to the south of Amethyst Mountain, right near this area right here right outside the caldera boundary northeast of Yellowstone Lake, a strange location for any type of swarm to occur. The pattern of seismicity has really changed the past few months, but what does all this mean? Could another round of uplift be starting? That is what I truly believe, but the data is not really showing that too much just yet. However, stay tuned because that can change very quickly. Now you know I don't like to use these online charts too much since you can generate your own and closely analyze the data however you want if you use the program Swarm, but I just wanted to be able to quickly show you the earthquakes that occurred recently. It seems there was some swarming near the Madison River area, seeing that station YMR here picked up these events first, to the best of my knowledge. As you're about to see, this swarm wasn't major, no, but it did occur at a very fast pace at times. We can see multiple earthquakes throughout the day right here. Multiple. They actually look like they're occurring in 
rapid succession, which usually we don't see too much up here near the Maple Creek Madison River area. Yes, sometimes we do, but we mainly see it down near Yellowstone Lake, West Thumb Lake, Shoshone Lake, all those areas near the south southeast edge of the caldera boundary but we are seeing some right here now let's go back just real quick let's press previous day just to show you what happened the day before and we did have some microquakes the day before as well too so and this is the seismicity right here it's the seismicity i just showed a second ago but up here we do have some as well. So why don't we go take a look at that in the seismic program swarm to get a full in-depth look of what the seismic signatures actually look like. Now here I am in the seismic program swarm. Now I'm going to open up the data first for this section here first and then I will get into the seismicity that occurred on the, notice how it says 27th right here. I'll show the 26th to the 27th first and then I'll show the 27th to the most recent time period. Let's go back to swarm. All right, I've opened up the data and the helicorder for YMR at Madison River. Now, first, I want to turn Persistent Rescale off, and I am also going to add a 0.7 hertz high-pass filter because this is a broadband station. And again, they usually add a 1 hertz high-pass filter to make the helicorders look like short-period helicorders. Whenever you see events like these, when I'm going to be analyzing this stuff, I don't know what these are. I looked on surrounding stations and I it doesn't show at all, but I'm very puzzled because surface noise, I wouldn't expect to really show like this because sometimes it really actually looks like some type of low frequency tremor at times. But I can't say that though because it only shows up on YMR. Yeah, I have not seen this appear on any other stations. So this is still up in the air. But for now, let's focus on the earthquakes that have occurred. Let's zoom out as much as we can just to get a broad look. Looks like the first earthquake occurred at about, what is that, 1157 UTC, January 26th, which is also 357 AM Pacific Time, January 26th. So let's go back out and let's look all throughout. What is this? Hello there. What is this? Possibly a teleseism. Let's check out the dominant frequencies real quick. Dominant frequencies at about, yeah, they start at about 0.5 hertz and end at about 1.6 hertz. Definitely probably a teleseism, though I don't know from which earthquake. I'll check that out later. Oh, that probably could be from the Columbia earthquake, unless I'm wrong about that. I probably could be wrong. But let's go forward. Keep going forward. You see two earthquakes right there. Keep going forward. We don't see too much on the first day, on the 26th. Then there's another earthquake. Let me zoom in. Let me just use the arrows. There we go. Yeah, not seeing too much else besides little tiny cracking and popping. Very teeny tiny. Then we see these very peculiar, I'm going to say surface events, but to me they do not look like surface events. The characteristics seem like some type of low frequency tremor, but the fact is they don't show on surrounding stations, so I can't say that. And then we see some more teeny tiny microquakes, little teeny tiny popping back and forth. Let's zoom in. Yep, those are definitely earthquakes, you could tell. Now, when you can actually tell what is an earthquake just by how they react and how they flow. For example, most surface noise does not have clear PNS wave arrivals. That is usually shown when the seismic waves travel through the ground. But I'm getting off topic here. I was going to save that for another video. But we see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. 17 right there, but they were very, very tiny though. Very tiny. Let's keep moving forward. We see a few more. Let's see 1, 2, 3, about 3 right there. Then we see one more. So yeah, guys, we do have multiple earthquakes occurring. And then we see a few more right there. Another strange low-frequency event right there. Again, these low-frequency events are not showing on surrounding stations, but I am going to dig into it a little bit further because they are very peculiar. Two more earthquakes. Not seeing much else. And they have high range frequencies, guys. It's not like this is a low-frequency swarm at all. Low-frequency earthquake swarms, that's what would... Get me a little concerned, guys. That's something to look out for. Keep going, keep going. 
Yeah, see, there weren't that many earthquakes on the 26th, but there definitely were some. Keep going forward. Teeny tiny popping and popping and popping. Another teleseism, I believe, unless this is the one I just looked at. That could be the one I just looked at. I don't know. And let's go forward, forward, and forward. Not seeing much else, except there is some more popping. Tiny, some more tiny popping. And then, again, this is the weird low-frequency event that has been occurring on Station YMR for quite some time now. This definitely looks like an earthquake. Multiple earthquakes or some type of tremor event. Don't know, though, because it's very weak. only goes to about 100 amplitude count. Let's go forward. As of the most recent data for this one day, we see not much. So, seismicity wasn't too crazy on this day, but it seemed like it did increase the next day on the 27th, and I think I missed this earthquake right here. Let's check this out. Let's just check the dominant frequencies of one of these events. They're very similar, so let's just, yeah, all the way through. Definitely no dominant low frequencies whatsoever. So, now let's back out of this. Let's close file and let's open the most recent data stream, first station YMR, which will show even more earthquakes. Let's go up here. All right, so we are at YMR. Let's turn on spectrogram, turn persistent rescale off, and add a 0 0.7 hertz high pass filter just to filter out those pesky background microseisms. Let's zoom out, shall we? Going forward, not seeing too much. There's one earthquake right there at the start of the 27th. Keep going forward, not seeing too much. And then we start to see some tiny poppings. And then look what appears. Let's go down. Let's go down to right about here. I think it starts. Yep, and here's where it starts. Some more earthquakes occurring in rapid succession. We do have that 347 to 348, about a minute. So I'm going to say probably about... Three or four of them in about a minute. That's not too crazy. I've seen way more earthquakes in a minute. I think the most I've ever seen was nine earthquakes in one minute at Yellowstone. I think that was during the April 11th, 2018 swarm. I think that's when that was. Keep going forward. We have some more earthquakes, some more popping. Notice they all have high range frequencies. No low frequencies as of yet. But some of them are occurring in pairs. Some of them do look like this. And sometimes it can be because of the P and S wave separation. But this is definitely two separate earthquakes. You could definitely tell. Look, there's the beginning of the P wave and the S wave starts right around there. Let's zoom out real quick. And then here's the second one. The P wave starts right about there and the S wave starts right in this area somewhere. And yeah, so those are two earthquakes happening in, I'm going to say less than 10 seconds, guys. So that's very rapid fire, very rapid succession. We see more earthquakes occurring in a rapid succession. Check this out right here. Look at these earthquakes. Look at how fast those are popping off, guys. Almost perfectly rhythmic, too. But they didn't last that long, and they were extremely tiny. They're almost too tiny to mention, but of course I'm going to mention it. And look, we do have some more earthquakes after that event I just showed. Let's zoom in onto these. 402 UTC to about 404 UTC. Again, occurring somewhat in rapid succession. This is a larger event. I'm going to say probably that's about 1.0 to 1.5. Don't know exactly. Let's go back to the spectrogram. Easier to see. Uh, go forward. Again, more earthquakes, more earthquakes, more popping, more popping. Come on. Is there anything new? All have high frequencies. Multiple earthquakes, guys. I'm going to say probably maybe 50 or more just in the past two days at uh, near Madison River and Maple Creek. Keep going. Little teeny tiny popping of the crust. Another earthquake right there. Not really happening at too much of a rapid sequence anymore, but it's still happening. There's another one of those strange, strange events on Madison River which I still have not been able to decipher. I don't know what the heck they are. And some more events right there. Zoom in onto this earthquake right here. Just check the dominant frequencies, just for shits and giggles. I kind of had some dominant frequencies near about 8.3 hertz. Actually, no, wait, that would be 8.1 hertz.
And just to save time on this video, let's just go forward, go forward, go forward. Not seeing much. Some little tiny popping here and there. So, guys, Madison River did see some earthquakes. Did see a good increase in earthquakes, too. Not too many, but they did occur. Let's scroll down just real quick. See if this will work. Go forward, forward, not seeing too much. Oh, we did have another sequence of earthquakes right here with a stronger event going to about 20,000 amplitude count. So I'm guessing that is probably around a 1.8 to 2.0. That's just what I'm guessing. And that's not what I wanted. Let's go forward. Some more earthquakes, some more earthquakes, and then nothing. Will they come back? Some little tiny popping here and there. Some more of that strange surface noise. I'm going to call it surface noise because I don't know what else to call it. Because it's not showing on surrounding stations. That is peculiar. Look at this. Look at the way it's shaped. Look at that. That is so strange. What is that? I, I'm still having trouble finding out what the heck that is. And then as of the most recent, there's some very strong background noise. And it is background noise because it's occurring at all frequencies. Usually when you see on a spectrogram background noise like this happening, because look, up here, see how the background noise is very blue? Like it, you really can't see it much. But down here, you can see it. This is usually wind, guys. Or maybe not just wind, but it definitely is some type of background noise because I see this on seismic stations all the time during storms. And remember, station YMR is probably not underground, guys. It's probably one of their, because in the WY network, the WY network, usually the stations are above ground, but the PB network, like Borehole 206, I believe, resides at Madison River, or is it Borehole 207? Either Borehole 206 or 207 resides near Madison River. That one is the one that's underground. Madison River itself, YMR itself, is not underground. So we did have an increase in earthquake activity at Yellowstone National Park near Madison River. No more than about probably 50 events within the past day or so. But we did see a slight increase in seismicity, though, and it did occur somewhat in a rapid-fire sequence. Definitely nowhere near what we have seen near West Thumb Lake and Yellowstone Lake. But still, it did occur. All have high-range frequencies, and it seems like this is just a normal swarm. But still, you never know what is normal and what isn't, guys. That's why I don't really like to use the word normal in regards to Yellowstone, because really, truthfully, honestly, there is no such thing as normal for Yellowstone. I mean, Yellowstone's weird sometimes. Now, here we are at earthquake.usgs.gov. I want to very quickly talk about a few earthquakes that have occurred. First off, there was a magnitude 4.5 earthquake off the coast of Oregon at 10 kilometers, supposedly 10 kilometers in depth. Remember, they also used the 10 kilometer mark, the exact 10.0 kilometer mark for depths that they don't know about. For example, very hidden earthquakes that are barely seen or registered on seismic stations. It's kind of hard to constrain the depth when dealing with those types of earthquakes. So whenever they don't know the depth, usually it's 10 kilometers. But sometimes earthquakes can occur at 10.0 kilometers in depth. So it's very confusing. And this magnitude 4.5 earthquake off the coast of Oregon occurred on January 27th, 2019 at 340 UTC, which is also 740 p.m. Pacific time, but on January 26th, 2019. Notice how it says five people reported feeling this event? What? Well, if true, this means it is likely more than five people felt this earthquake. Why? Remember, it's because these are the people that reported feeling it to USGS. Not everybody reports it to USGS whenever they feel the ground shake. Let's go to Did You Feel It just real quick, just to see where these people were, because it's kind of hard to believe five people felt this small of an earthquake that far away. I mean, a 4.5 is not small, guys. I'm not saying it's small, but still... I just, very odd. Okay, so it is around Oregon. So that may be somewhat believable. That may be somewhat believable. Except this up here, no. Because then that means, I live right here, guys. I live right here. So that means I could have probably felt it. I don't know. And there was another earthquake up there. So this felt report could be for the wrong earthquake. But still, 
I don't know. Now here we have the data from station JEDS in the UW network. According to the data, this station is the closest seismic station to the epicenter of the magnitude 4.5 that occurred on the Cascadia subduction zone. Although it was not small, you can see right here, it wasn't too small, but it barely registered on seismic stations, making me question how anybody could have felt this earthquake at all. Now let's just pan down real quick. This is the earthquake right here, occurred at about 3.40 UTC, uh, almost 3.41 actually. It took about a minute to reach this seismic station, even though it was closest. That's because this event occurred way off the coast, and we used to have seismometers on the bottom of the ocean on the Cascadia subduction zone off the coast of northern Oregon and northern Washington, but for some reason, somebody took those stations down. I don't know why. I have no idea why, but they did. And here you can see I have a 0.7 hertz high pass filter added to kind of draw out the earthquake a little bit more. But you can see you can barely notice it amongst the background microseisms. Barely notice it. Very hard to catch. I'm surprised the seismologist ca uh, caught it at all because I probably would have missed it. And let's check it here. Again, very, very weak. Let's check the amplitude count one more time. Up to about maybe 400, 300, 400 max. So I still don't know how anybody could have felt this event at all. Very weak, guys. Very weak. Let's check the dominant frequencies. Is it, the dominant frequency on the spectra isn't going to be too, too reliable because this station is very far away. But still, we see dominant frequencies at about 0 0.6 hertz to about 0 0.9 hertz, which is what we should see. Here we are back at the USGS earthquake site. So there was also an earthquake in New Mexico. Notice here's Albuquerque. And what is that puppy dog right there? Now it registered as a magnitude 2.9 earthquake at 1.7 kilometers in depth on January 26, 2019 at 721 UTC. Notice again, the earthquake occurred just east of this extremely large crater right here. You see the crater edge is right about there and the center is right there. So what is that? This large crater is not a meteor impact, but is actually called the Vowels Caldera in New Mexico. And please let me know if I named it right, or if I said the name right. Vowels or valets? I'm pretty sure it's the Vowels Caldera, right? Now, the Vowels Caldera is an ancient supervolcano in New Mexico. Shockingly, USGS has not declared this supervolcano extinct, seeing that if you go to the volcano page for this volcano, it shows that the threat level rests at moderate. Of course, that isn't very high, but if it were extinct, there would be no threat level at all, so they do believe it is probably potentially still active, guys. The, they, yeah, New Mexico has a supervolcano. Who would have thought? Really, though, do you know how many supervolcanoes the United States probably has? We've got a lot more than just two, guys. And, and that, that's just super volcanoes. That doesn't count the many scoria cones, the many lava domes, the many stratovolcanoes we have. I mean, we've got it all, guys. It's, we've got so much magmatic activity, so many potentially active magma chambers just sitting under so many potentially active volcanoes in the United States. I am shocked beyond belief that we only see about, what, one and a half, two eruptions per century? How is that possible when we have like hundreds, if not thousands, of active magma chambers and active volcanic systems? I think it's just definitely a blessing. I think it's definitely a blessing that we have not seen an increase in volcanic activity for a long time. Apparently, this earthquake was strong enough to be felt by at least five people. Again, remember, this is only the number of people that reported feeling it, not the actual number of people who felt it. Don't even have to look at the map. I don't know if you can see it or not, but all the felt reports are right around the epicenter. Here we have the data on the seismic program swarm for station ANMO in the IU network, which is the closest seismic station to the epicenter of this event. Now I want to turn persistent rescale off and again do a 0.7 hertz high pass filter to get rid of, mostly get rid of, those pesky background microseisms. Now let's check out the earthquake. The earthquake occurred, excuse me, earthquake, <laughs> occurred at 721.53, so about 7.22. And here it is right here. Okay. Normal high range frequencies. Doesn't really go beyond 20 hertz, but 
Definitely not a low frequency event. Remember, I always look out for low frequency events. And the frequencies did not drop with the coda. Usually we see a low sloping seismic signature as it goes on and on and on. Remember like the one that we saw at, uh, what is it, Mauna Loa this morning? Remember the magnitude 3.7? The tail lasted a long time, but it was down here at a very low frequency. This tail lasted a good amount of time, yes, but it did not drop in frequency. Usually the coda of an earthquake usually is much lower because it's mainly composed of surface waves. Usually. Usually. Let me just zoom in here for a second. Very interesting. Seems to me, though, this is deeper. Or unless this is two separate earthquakes. Could this be two separate earthquakes? Maybe. I don't know. It looks like one earthquake, but then, no, I'm pretty sure this is the same event. I'm pretty sure. Now, let's go around and look for any low-frequency background tremor behind 5 hertz, or below 5 hertz, excuse me. Not seeing too much. Nope. No other earthquakes really at all. So it was just this one earthquake here. Right here. Just that one, what was it, magnitude 2.9? Yeah, and that's it. Interesting. Now we're back on the USGS earthquake page. Now the last event I will quickly show is this earthquake right here. Let me zoom in just one more time. Okay, so we have Indiana over here. See this line right here. We have Ohio right here, and this is Kentucky right here. Now, it was a magnitude 2.0 earthquake at 5.6 kilometers in depth on January 26, 2019 at 1211 UTC. Now, it struck near the northern part of Kentucky near the border of Ohio and Indiana. I have heard that some people in both Kentucky and Indiana have been hearing some strange booms lately, so please comment below if you are one of the people who have felt or heard these mysterious booms. If they have occurred in the past few weeks, please give me a general location, time period, and date via email so that I can check the seismic data for seismic signatures related to the boom you are wondering about. And not just that, if any of you guys have ever heard or felt those mysterious big booms that are going on all over the world, they seem to be going on more in the United States. But all over the world, people are hearing these strange, mysterious booms. And sometimes they're not showing up on seismic stations. Well, I want to kind of challenge that idea that it's not showing up. And I want to be able to catch some of these mysterious booms on the seismic stations. But I need to rely on you guys, the viewers. I need your guys' help. If you have heard or seen of any booms, give me the exact date and time, as close as you can get, and the exact location, as close as you can get. And remember, always tell me the time zone, because that's one of the things I need to know before I download the data, is the time zone. Now, apparently only one person reported feeling this earthquake. It was not that strong, but usually earthquakes in this area shake things up more than their counterparts that occur on the western section of the United States. But it's still. Here we are back at the seismic program swarm to quickly analyze the magnitude 2.0 earthquake in Kentucky that struck on January 26th. I have downloaded the data from station FLKY in the KY network for this time period. Now we see the time of this earthquake occurred at 12.11 UTC. Oh, first I forgot. Persistent rescale off. It is a short period station. Do not really have to add a filter. Turn spectrogram on. Okay, we're good to go. At about 12.11, here it is right here. Now, notice how it goes well beyond the 25 hertz line automatically generated by this spectrogram. Well, we can change that if we want. Let's go to 55. A little bit too far. See, that's why I love the program Swarm, guys. You could do whatever you want. 35. So it went up to about 35 hertz. Let's just do 40 just to top it off real quick. Spectrogram maximum frequency range, 40 hertz. Notice, though, notice something very strange about this event. Usually, this never happens, but this was reported to be an earthquake. Notice, no frequencies below 5 hertz. Actually, that's 2.8 hertz. No frequencies below 2.8 hertz. What? How is that possible? And we see this earthquake right here. Let's, let's zoom in very close. Very extremely peculiar earthquake. Very sharp signals, guys. Very sharp arrivals. I don't even know what this is. And there's something else going on here, too. I'm going to show you in just a second. But let's go right here. Notice you can see the earthquake starts right here and then has 
an elongated coda as usual as the earthquake dies down. But again, I don't think this was a regular tectonic event. Something's going on down in Kentucky and Indiana, guys. I don't know what it is. Maybe this is another one of those strange booms that was actually recorded by a seismic instrument. I don't know. But now let's move on to the weird thing. So we've analyzed this earthquake. Oh, let's check the dominant frequencies just real quick, just, just to see how weird it is. That is very, very peculiar. Look at that. Very specific frequencies near 15 hertz, 15.2 actually, 15.5, and 15.9. Very strange spikes, guys. This was, I've never seen an earthquake like this in my entire life, except it looks very similar to a chemical explosion near the Oroville Dam that they have been doing recently. But they haven't done it too recently. That was about a few months ago, I believe. It's also on my website too. But look at what is this? What? Look at this. Watch this signal. Look at this. What is that? Look at that. Isn't that strange? I have never seen anything like that in my entire life. It's very perfectly rhythmic, too. Look at that. Now, I'm thinking that's definitely something man-made. Definitely they're doing something down there right now. Uh, what's this? Oh, that's just Telsism. But, what are they doing down there, and why are they doing it? Again, let me zoom in on one of these. Look at the drum beat pattern. Look at that. You see those spikes? Almost perfectly spaced, too. Look at that. What are these? What are they doing in Kentucky and Indiana? Are they drilling? Are they building some type of underground base? You know, it, it's sad, you know, some people think people are crazy because they think that there's underground bases. Well, guess what? There are underground bases. Ever heard of Cheyenne Mountain? <laughs> That's like one of the biggest ones ever. I wonder what seismic uh, signatures was created when they were making Cheyenne Mountain. That, that would have been very interesting to see. Here we are at the Old Faithful webcam, pointing towards Old Faithful. <laughs> Excuse me, Old Faithful, not Old Faithful. And pointing towards the Geyser Hill as well. And this is the wonderful Upper Geyser Basin. Notice it looks pretty windy there. The camera's shaking a little bit, and the steam is really being pushed off to the side. So, that's it for right now, guys. There seems to be some small swarming at Yellowstone, and there have been some interesting earthquakes lately, especially in Hawaii. Especially the three earthquakes that I just analyzed a minute ago off the Cascadia subduction zone in New Mexico and in Kentucky. Again, if you have heard or felt any strange booms or bangs that have not been reported as an earthquake, please let me know immediately so I can try my best to gather data from your region and identify any possible causes. Steamboat Geyser in the Norse Geyser Basin erupted again for the third time of 2019, which is the 35th time since it reactivated in early 2018. I have that data in my most recent video and on my website under the Seismic Events drop-down menu in Steamboat Geyser 2019. It was the weakest eruption out of all 35 eruptions. So is it dying or is it stabilizing to become a more normal, regular interval geyser? I don't know, so we'll have to wait and see. If anyone is currently visiting Yellowstone, please let me know. Also, I do believe another round of uplift is starting for Yellowstone, but I don't know yet. We will have to wait and see. I will continue to keep an eye on volcanic and tectonic hazard areas throughout this country and will update you if anything concerning may take place. Keep an eye on both multiple pages on my website and my YouTube channel. God bless her. Remember, the truth is considered hater fear to those who hater fear the truth. Ben Ferriolo signing off.